Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and uh, today we've got a pair of ladies flu bogs. Come join us and check out how we end up replacing this entire heel block and see how it's built on the inside and how everything's secured. Might answer a few questions for some of you ladies about uh, potential broken heels, so check it out. I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods as well as recommendations from our industry. So, I've got these flu bogs in, as you can tell, the heel base is a little beaten up. I mean, this one can technically still be saved. There's not much else wrong with it. But the lady ended up contacting the company and they sent out a new pair for her. And so she brought these in. And um, we'll go ahead and replace them. I'll go ahead and do just one so that we could do side by side because these are slightly different as far as the style i mean the style of boot is currently still available from what i understand but the heels have been changed on them a little bit so we're going to get that taken care of one of the things also that she's liking from what she told me is that different size toplets sorry about the interruption or was that oh but she ends up uh, liking that little bit wider base on these ones the top top lift on them so this little section at the top little rubber cap sometimes it's plastic it's usually rubber plastic or a combination of both and that's called the top lift um, dowel pin as well this particular one it's a top lift style because key differences with a dowel pin one we'll grab one up here dowel pins they have metal rod like that that's uh almost like inserted into the rubber, but in reality, it's the rubber that's molded around the metal piece. So some people call it insert, but it's not. And uh, so that's a dowel pin style, but this one's just usually adhered on or it has a couple little pegs that are kind of molded into that plastic top lift section. And uh, yeah, so for anybody that might be wondering about that one, but we'll go ahead and get started on this. Open up the zipper. Uh, pull up the insole so insole we don't need to take it out completely we're just going to pull it up some and tuck it out of the way because once you access it underneath here i don't know if that's visible Sorry, trying to get it just right once you see it in there possibly there is if I can just get it to open up better there is a screw in the center with four nails now the screw, obviously self-explanatory, it's just a screw. But the nail heads, those are what are called gripper nails. They've got these little rings around them. And so once they go in there, they grab hold of the material very well. So it's, it takes a little effort to kind of pry it off. But not all ladies footwear, even men's too, some of them that have a heel. Take out that screw real quick. But not all, not all the heels will have a screw like this, so it's just a basic standard type of screw, nothing too particular or fancy about it. Not all of them have that in there. Some of them are just being held in by the nails. Sometimes they have a very large staple with four prongs in there, and they they work, but they're not very, uh, not very durable. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start getting ready to pull off the rest of the heel base as far as grabbing those nails and try and pull them out first will actually cause more damage on the internal structure here and we don't want that to happen so the best way for us to do it is to actually start forcing this heel block off so that the nail heads get stuck in here and pull it out that direction I'm trying to get in there with some kind of nail puller or pry we have to almost dig them out because they're sitting inside this uh, midsole section and because they're hidden away that way, we have to tear into it. So we wanna avoid that. But let me go ahead and uh, put a little bit of thin around it because sometimes there's a little bit of glue there and uh, also the rust from the nails or the screws can start to build up a little bit and makes it even tougher. So grab some thinner, pour it on the bottom just a little bit. Sorry, I gotta do this off screen just, oh, I guess it's on screen possibly, I don't know. And just uh, let it sit for a few minutes. So I'll let it do its magic and uh, we'll go from there. Some of you might be wondering also, why don't I just put some inside here? We don't want that because this midsole is usually fiberboard. Fiberboard is basically 
compressed paper and particles, um, particle board, I'm sorry. And um, unfortunately adding that much moisture at one time will break it down way too much. So not a good idea to do that. That's kind of like a very, very last resort. And then we have to deal with uh, kind of readjusting that midsole and fixing it up before we can end up continuing on with the, with the repair process. But I'll let that sit there for a few minutes and I'll see everyone back here in just a few seconds. All right, so we're back here again. Uh, got a little uh, sidetracked with a few other things. Got a haircut, by the way, today. Hope you guys like it. It's a little uh, different, basically. I'm trying to see what I can do with the hair, keeping the top all long and growing out the beard. Comment what you think down below. I don't know yet what I'm doing with my hair, so it's just whatever. But uh, back to the shoes, or boots in this case. I've got the uh, old heel block off. It looks like it did come off with the old gripper nails. That tends to happen a lot of times just because the plastic grips to these gripper nails a lot more than it does to the shoe itself. So majority of the time what happens is that if one of these heels break off, um, it kind of just the whole nail pops out and everything. So that happens very often, probably I would say 99% of the time. But this kind of gives you an idea of what it's constructed like underneath there. So here underneath the sole, if we were to take it apart, which we're not going to, otherwise it becomes a big mess. There's a steel shank under here and that's what gives it that curvature. So as you can tell, even when I apply a little bit of pressure, try to bend it, it's not gonna bend. That steel shank is angled properly, par properly, sorry, I can't talk, for this particular pair of uh, boots here. You know, they have different angles, different pitches. You know, sometimes they'll have an angle here and then it slopes straight to a straight point at the back here or down here. Sometimes they do that too, but um, there are different variants out there. So changing the heel height and pitch can sometimes become problematic. So if you got a pair of these off of another pair of shoes or from a different style, it's not always that they're going to fit. That is one of the other things I'd like to mention is when it comes to shortening heels, it doesn't work out. Majority of the time when we have to shorten a heel, quarter of an inch is usually kind of the, you know, the limit. On some shoes nowadays I've been seeing, especially Louboutins, for example, they're, they're so perfectly cut down that if you cut it down anymore, you're going to be leaning back too far. And there's a high chance that you're either going to break this heel block or the steel shank in there. And either one of them is not a pretty sight, basically. So, you know, thought I'd sh show that to you and kind of explain it. Now, as far as if you really, really want to have the shoes still keep them and uh, have a different height heel, like a lower one especially, at that point we would have to take apart this whole section here, take out the old shank, and then put a new one in that's adjusted for that particular pitch and angle for the new heel block or the new height of the existing heel block. So it's a really big project to do, usually as far as changing the height more than a quarter of an inch. So just thought I'd mention that. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and run this over to what's called our heel wheel. And it's gonna allow us to press this into position with some adhesive for now. And the adhesive is just gonna temporarily hold it in place just so that we can make sure it's all lined up and, uh, and then finally start running the nails and the screws in. So let's go ahead and go to the heel wheel then. All right, so we're over at our heel wheel here. Some of you may have seen me running nails through it, but I'll kind of show you a different uh, version of it too. So, let me just try to see if I can do this for you. Sorry about that noise, but, so the heel wheel, it's got this uh, section right here that we're gonna put the shoe over like that. And it's just gonna hold everything in position. And then afterwards, we've got these different type of blocks and attachments we've got like different sizes and shapes and everything and so i matched up this one to it and goes right in there just like that so this is going to hold it all in position and uh we're going to put it underneath this press and then press it down now before i do that of course i got to put some adhesive in i did sand out this bottom area here a little bit because of course it's uh molded smooth plastic and so we need to uh, have a little bit of a rougher surface for everything to bind to. I just went ahead and did that by hand. It's a little bit easier than on a machine because the machines, they spin really fast and 
could take off a little more than more than we would have want. So let's see. Um, make sure that's all lined up. Just gonna let it sit there for a good couple of minutes and let the adhesive take effect. And then once it's off, then we can double check and examine everything, make sure it's all lining up properly. And if it isn't, then we can easily take it off and uh, readjust it just a hair. So I think it looks like it's all lined up there. Okay. All right. So I'll leave it on there for a few minutes and uh, we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, so I've taken this off the press. Looks like it uh, settled in pretty good. Looks just about ready, right? And we still got to run the nails and everything through. So we've got these uh, 5 8 inch gripper nails like this here. Usually that's plenty enough for a heel block of this type that we're going to go ahead and put in. And because there's a steel shank going through here, we're not going to add too many. We're going to do four just like they had originally. A lot of times, um, you know, adding an extra nail is great and all, but the problem is that uh, you might hit that steel shank and then you have problems with it going in kind of crooked or something. So definitely don't want that. You know, make sure that's sitting on there good. You can quite see it there. Let's see if I can open this back up a bit more for better visibility. But uh, there are four nails sitting inside there now. So now at this point, I can go ahead and grab the drill, drill out that center piece right there, and uh, put a new screw in there. We can use the same one technically, but it's better to put a fresh one in there. It gives a little bit more strength and stability. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the table now. All right, so I've got the drills here. Usually we have just one, but it's still setting up because of the whole move. So let's go ahead and fill this out. Okay, it's pretty good there. And as far as the screw that I'm using, it's a stainless steel version, so it's going to be a little bit more durable than the previous one, as well as it's not going to corrode either. The previous uh, screw that was in there, it's, I mean, it's not going to corrode either way, but kind of a good, uh, good thing to have that just as a precaution always. Make sure it sits in there good. Okay. I may need to put a, a little bit of a different bit on the end. It's the one I have on here. It's it's a nice screw bit, but it's a little bit small. Well, a little narrow, so. So, go ahead and uh, got that in there now. So at this point, I can go ahead and uh, go up the insole. I'm gonna go ahead and buff that off, buff that all up, and uh, buff up the shoe a little bit. Grab the contact cement here. Go. 
right, give that a few minutes to cure nicely. I'm not gonna put on any kind of last and just start trying to hammer it out, of course. But, uh, you know, just apply some hand pressure in there. Okay, got that taken care of. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this over to the buffer, buff it up, get it all uh, taken care of, and we'll see you back here in just a few. There we go. So, got this one all buffed up, get the dust off of it. Got the heel kind of buffed up there. And um, this one is just a tad bit narrower here, it looks like, so I had to touch it up ever so slightly in some of the areas. I mean, it's, it's still gonna be stable because it's all on the center basically is where all the weight goes on this guy so it's gonna hold up very well angle and pitch everything looks perfect on it so should have no problems whatsoever and we've got the uh, new nails in there that are gonna hold it up nicely and uh, the new stainless steel screw so and then this guy here I mean some culvers like to save them and potentially reuse them down the road ever I I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, considering that this is not heel, I'm gonna probably just keep it just, just for some kind of weird experiment. You never know. I thought I might, but uh, yeah, gives you an idea of doing these guys here. Got a completely new heel block on there. Pretty cool, yeah. So now you know how the. Uh, Heel blocks are secured and everything, so if any of you ladies ever have any kind of issues with the uh, heel popping off, coming apart, or anything, you know, usually on a higher end pair of shoes or boots out there, you shouldn't have any form of pro any forms of problems. Sorry, I can't talk. It's uh, kind of getting late here already, but uh, you shouldn't have any kind of problems whatsoever with it coming apart. I've only really seen it happen on nice high end shoes with, you know extreme measures basically I mean you know getting stuck in an escalator or something along those lines even that even after escalators I've seen pictures from other cobblers that they posted where a shoe got stuck in an escalator and so the heel wrap got all damaged and beaten up and everything but the heel block itself ended up uh, staying intact it stayed on so you know there are never really much issues the only ones we ever see those issues are on cheap shoes um, low quality builds and everything that just aren't very well made uh, that tend to have that staple like I was talking about it's basically just an oversized staple about an inch by a half inch square and then each corner has a prong with little jagged teeth in there basically that once it's pressed in there it goes in the problem is that once it pops off um, those teeth majority of the time are still stuck in the heel block and they're next to impossible to actually remove and also the other thing is that um, you know the way that the shank and those are designed they just those staples really just fit very very tight and everything there's not much room to be able to work with adding a new um, new screw or anything like that so it becomes very problematic so some of those uh, lower quality builds just are not worth messing with they are not worth having the heel block replaced on and so on but uh, anyways, again, hope you enjoyed the video. I should probably turn them around like that. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you like our channel and what we've been showing so far. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or you can swing on by if you're local. If you're not local, uh, you can contact us through our website, cobblersplus.com. Otherwise, it also has all our other contact information on there uh, for giving us a call or sending photos because sometimes through the website photos end up having some issues I guess but our email address is on there so you can email us, email us directly as well and if you're wanting us to work on any of your footwear and you're not here local in the Denver area or in Colorado even you can always ship them in to us there's a tab at the top of our website uh, it's the ship and order tab just follow the instructions on there, fill out the PDF form, place it in a box, ship it out to us. We'll give you a call within the first couple of days after receiving it. Uh, talk over the repair options, the process, and have it scheduled out. And once it's all ready, we'll ship it back to you so you can continue to enjoy, enjoy your shoes, boots, or even other leather goods. But yes, we do other leather goods too. Purses, jackets, belts, uh, even chaps we get in every now and then too. So we do a fair amount. 
We've got all that equipment for uh, leather goods, so we could definitely put it to good, to good use. Man, I cannot talk. I'm sorry. But uh, anyways, again, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time then.